Welcome to episode 38, Self-Care. Journey with us over the next hour about how we practice self-care as humans and as witches. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Witchy Wit Podcast, where we look at life through a witchy lens. I'm Kimberlyn. I'm Leilani. At Witchy Wit, we explore current events, ideas, music and books, and experiences in ways that recognize energy and life in everybody and everything. We are both real witches. And we bring two real perspectives through the lens of our different ages, races, and backgrounds. With a healthy skepticism for what we have been told is true, our conversations are raw, candid, and vulnerable. Join us as we cast a spell to uncover what we each know is true in our intuitive, witchy selves. Welcome to episode 38, Self-Care. Self-care. Yay! Something that I think is super, super important. Um, well, we'll discuss it in a, <laughs> in a bit. In the meantime, let's have a check-in. So uh, what's been going on with you, either in the mundane or the... Not so mundane world. So I wanted to check in about a crossover from the mundane world into the not so mundane world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, you and I have a mutual friend Mm -hmm. that we both love very much. (laughs) And what's super cool about her is I think that she is from different parts of of our lives, Mm -hmm, but but we figured out we had a mutual friend Mm -hmm. in her, which I take as validation that she's awesome. Yeah, she's super cool. Yeah. When someone cool says someone's cool. Yeah. And you already think that they're cool. It's like, it's really nice to kind of have that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Mm -hmm, Exactly. mm -hmm. So her awesome factor was validated whenever I found (laughs) out that you two are friends. So, so she bought us necklaces, Mm -hmm. um, moon necklaces, and and there was a... May I describe them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, uh, they're on a, on a gold chain and they're uh, half crescents. Or crescent moons, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Crescent. crescent moons. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and and so, do you want to describe the rest of it, or like what they? They're like G. Mm-hmm. I, I would describe them as like geo texture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're one is white mm-hmm. and one is black. Mm-hmm. So she so so she purchased two, mm-hmm. one for each of us, and then we because got... because she thought of us. Yes, yeah, so we just goes to <laughs> again. Awesome. And then she gave them to us and said we could pick which one we wanted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, and I always wear black. Currently, I'm mm-hmm. wearing all black right yes, now. Yes, you are. Yes. Um, and, which mm-hmm. is something I can talk about later, mm-hmm. but it's mostly out of efficiency. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, but I was like, oh, I like I, I want the black one because I always wear all black. But I'm like feeling really pulled to this white one, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is really weird mm-hmm. for me because I don't. I, you know, I was, but I'm like, this is weird. And I remember the moment because I'm like, this is weird, but I've learned to trust my mm-hmm, mm-hmm, intuition in that mm-hmm. way. So I, so I wanted the white one mm-hmm. and you, I took the black one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I think I like them both. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'm usually very selfish and I would like get the one I want and say, oh yeah, my, uh, uh, this person, <laughs> you, this person got this for you, <laughs> but trying to be a little bit more open and recognize that, you know, it's not always about me. Would you have picked the black one? If I had, if I, if I had given you the choice first? I don't know. I don't know. I, um, I really, I really liked the white one, Mm. but you know, it was one of those, I I would have, I would have been happy with either, Mm -hmm. but I, I I think I might've actually liked the white one better, but I gave you the choice. I gave you the choice and it worked out nicely because yeah. Okay. And here's how it worked out. This is what I want to share. This is the part that's super, super cool. So So then (laughs) months later, Mm -hmm. months later, Mm -hmm. uh, one of our sisters in our circle asked asked us to join a ritual team mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or we volunteered to join the ritual mm-hmm. team and she asked us for certain roles mm-hmm. and it's for the equinox oh yes okay. mm-hmm. yes 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 for the equinox mm-hmm. uh and she in her beautiful ritual design it was about uh light and dark and their interactions with justice mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so uh i i volunteered to be a part of the ritual and she asked for me to be the priestess of dark mm-hmm and, and she asked for me to be the priestess of light. Cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right? Yeah, it was And, right. and of course, my reaction was like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Let's do this, right? Yeah, yeah. And then we were in a ritual planning session. And then afterwards, you mentioned to me, hey, do you still have that necklace? Which, of course, I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, we should wear those necklaces. And it was in that moment that I realized 
that months ahead months ahead of this mm-hmm. that we had been give, gifted these mm-hmm. necklaces and that that they had come to not only come to us but then been separated mm-hmm. with me with the black and mm-hmm. you with the white one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so and and what i thought was so when when she first asked me to be the light i thought oh that's interesting blah 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 and then when she said that you were the dark i don't know if it clicked th- at that point but I just thought, first of all, I just thought it was a great way to play with our energy, your mm-hmm. energy and my energy. But then when I got, when I remembered we had those necklaces and remembered the colors that we chose, mm-hmm. I just thought, wow, this is so, syn- uh, you know, it's, there's a synchronicity involved with this that mm-hmm. is just kind of amazing. Or maybe, maybe people just read us or something. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But, I, but I think the reason <laughs> why I wanted to check in about this, mm-hmm. one is it's just cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and two, I just appreciate our, our mutual friend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, she makes me feel seen in a way, which I really appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't feel seen in the workspace uh, mm-hmm. very often because I don't show this part of me. But it, it just feels nice to have somebody from that area of my life, you know, it, it just it, it, yeah, that part it feels it feels mm-hmm. nice. Uh, but the other thing that I just wanted to check in about was something I appreciate is being uh, I don't know what word to use, but like awake enough that when things like this happen, just treating them as like delicious Mm -hmm. moments Mm -hmm. and just enjoying that I see the magic and the mystery that are happening all around me all the time and with the people that I love. Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. So that leads (laughs) to my (laughs) check-in, which we didn't realize. (laughs) We did not realize how connected our check-ins were until we, which... I'm just going to sit in the magic and the, the mystery, mystery of, of, yes, of, of like this, this. The synchronicity, yes, right? Yes, I right? love it. So I saw the same, this person that we just, we were just talking about. I saw this person a couple of, uh, yesterday. And she gave me something that she picked up at the farmer's market. At the farmer, the pearls, the pearl, was it at the pearl? The pearl farmer's market. The pearl farmer's market. market. Mm-hmm. Um, and I showed it to you and you just kind of lost your shit. <laughs> did it now you're, you're like holding it in front of me and i'm just like trying not to touch it <laughs> well you can tell us why in a moment so let me describe it it's um it's a tea towel and it's kind of it's a like a, a, a gray but instead of just having and, and it's a, a calendar so imprinted on the on the tea towel is a is the year the, the year you, and you i've seen those for you know in other for um, others but instead of just having the days of the month it also has the moon phase as it shows on that day. So, like, I'm looking at July now. So, like, there's a little sliver on the second, and then it gets a little bit bigger on the third, a little bit bigger on the fourth, until it's a full moon, uh, it looks like, on the 20th. And then, you know, and it stays kind of big for the rest of that week. And then it gets, it starts to wane and gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's a little sliver again over the course of the month. So it's literally the moon phase is for 2022. I'm losing my shit. She, so she, cool. just, she, she saw that. I think, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think you squealed. I think you were just kind of speechless oh, for a yes. moment. Yes. So cool. So, so would you refresh our memory? Tell us one of the, what's your, yeah. Yeah. My, my commitment this year is to study the moon and the phases. Mm -hmm. And so I have like a a date book and, uh, and the woman that we had on the astrologer that we had Mm -hmm, on, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, she recommended a a daily devotional for the Mm -hmm, moon phases. So mm -hmm. every, every day I've been reading, uh, the the devotional and Mm -hmm. then looking in the date book about what the moon is doing and Mm -hmm. then uh, journaling about it. So when when she gave this to me, I said, I can't wait to show this to you. Because <laughs> I knew you were doing that practice. And this is just so super. I mean, it's just so cool. It's, it's so just cool. so, so, and, and it's the whole, and it's, and it's, 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 you know, for 2022. Um, and it's the whole shittery, right? In terms of all of the, every month. And it also has some, di- I, I, I didn't want to open it until you saw it. So I guess I can open it <laughs> and we can actually look at the whole thing. I'm probably going to lose my, my stuff but yeah, all over but again. It's, it has the, oh, there's a moon on it. It's a, oh, there's a full moon at the top it's, center, y'all. Then, I mean, it's just so cool. I cannot and even. Then, oh, and then it and has, a key. oh, and it tells you when the par- partial sol- solar eclipses are. Oh, that's and, so cool. Oh my gosh. The, a super, a super, do we have any super moons and super moon? It's like so great. It's so great. Jeez. Yeah. So, so, I mean, this is just amazing. It's just really an amazing. <laughs> So cool. So needless to say, when I showed it to her, I think, did, did you did you even wait a moment or did you start texting her right away? I, te- like, I immediately texted her and I was like, where did you get this? 
but it's really really it's cool. So cool, and I yeah. I love I just I love that. I will speak for myself. Yeah, yeah. I don't know mm-hmm. if this is true mm-hmm. for you, but mm-hmm. it's just really refreshing to feel seen. To, fi- to yes. It and is, loved. yeah. I, it's, uh, this is, you know, I know when I'm in my circle, mm-hmm. we all love each other and we all love on each other and, and it's super cool, but it's nice to to be outside and have someone who, first of all, not judging and mm-hmm. not, and, and the thing I lo- really love about talking to her about this is that <clears throat> she doesn't, um, she doesn't have these preconceived ideas, or she may, but it's not a part of our conversation. She lets me be my version of a, what a witch is mm-hmm, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's nice to be seen and it's nice to be honored for who I am and not, you know, I could be this, that, or the other, I could be these labels mm-hmm. and she sees, she sees past the labels and, and sees, sees me and, and then buys, buys things for the <laughs> me that she sees. Cool. <laughs> And then, so cool. and then for me, like knowing her in a different space, I, I felt connected to her. Mm-hmm. And I, I would say we were more like friends than, mm-hmm. than colleagues or than like 99% mm-hmm. of the people I work with. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I could be more authentic around her, but I never came out of the broom closet to her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then to have her know you and then listen to the <laughs> podcast and then, it, and then be so, hey, like, <laughs> when you listen to this <laughs> and then it, and then it, then therefore like be outed, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which, you know, was my choice, mm-hmm. but then to feel this sense of like that's okay because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. she's she is who she is she's cool yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's just been a really cool experience mm-hmm. and one that i never i mean i've never done a podcast before so <laughs> but what a cool experience yeah. and what mm-hmm. a magical one it, indeed indeed I, like you say it's it's not just her seeing me but her seeing us mm-hmm. and you know opening up her um her perspective of her view of us in and allowing us to be who we are so, episode thirty-eight, self-care. Um, this is, you know, I have a, I have. It's not. A, mm, I don't. I was gonna say I have a love-hate relationship. No, I love self-care. I just don't have a consistent relationship with. <laughs> you know, it's like that 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 boyfriend that or whatever kind of partner you might choose that kind of drifts in and out of your life, <laughs> and that's self-care for me. What about with you? Uh, so I. I have a negative reaction towards the word self-care. Oh, okay. Because as a as a teacher, it's so social emotional learning SEL stuff has mm-hmm. come into what I would call a fad recently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although I do believe it is incredible, you know, I think all good teachers have been doing it forever. We mm-hmm, we just mm-hmm. kind of have started labeling it within the past whatever mm-hmm. years as SEL, <clears throat> but um a, a part of that is now they're like teachers should have self-care. Um and in my opinion, it's like a Band-Aid being slapped on a mm-hmm. crack in a foundation. <laughs> and they're like, let's do yeah. three minutes of deep breathing, give you some coloring books with some crayons, and then you're good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, let's not address class sizes mm-hmm. and discipline issues. And, and no the, money. And, you're buying, yeah. like, stuff for your students. Yeah. And, and not getting paid mm-hmm. well and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And hours spent doing the work at home. Yes. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. So for <laughs> me, when I hear that, that's that's like the frame mm-hmm. of reference I'm coming from. And when I strip that away and I really think about what are ways that I can take care of myself, that's whenever I come into this, my sense of of self-care from that perspective is this like radical warrior type feeling of reclaiming myself. It just feels like this really radical idea. Um, and so now, do I always do it? No. Am I great at it? <laughs> Not really. But whenever I like center myself and stand in it, it feels like this, just this intense, like, uh, sense of overcoming all of these things that have just been piled on, uh, by our society. So right. that's, that's a perspective I have. Mm-hmm. It's funny that you mentioned that because I hadn't thought about that until just now. And, I, you know, when you think of all of the things that we're going to be talking about over the course of the episode um, in, 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 um, as ways of caring for ourselves, I, I'm now starting to think of it as this huge team. You know, so like, you know, a massage therapist, uh, you know, an emotional therapist, uh, you know, someone, someone to keep your bicycle up and running. You know what I mean? It's like this huge entourage of people to, to, to get you going. And, and unfortunately, most of us don't have that entourage, but we have to create the space in our lives so that either we or um, hired professionals or um, loved ones or whatever can provide all of those things, right? Yeah, I love the idea of a self-care entourage. (laughs) 
like walking in instead of like walking into a club with like your bodyguard and like your groupies you like you like walk into your i don't know bathroom and you're like this is my self-care entourage (laughs) and they immediately start scurrying you know like they walk in the door you come in they come in right behind you but then they scatter to take care of all i love it i love it right (laughs) So one, one day, one all these day. Par- all these different parts of myself, like there's a part of me making tea and a part of me taking a bath and a part of me sitting on the couch going to therapy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I love that. So we have to, you know, there's 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 a career in there somewhere. I have to think about that. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about um, what self care looks like. So we we we, we talked about our dream self care, <laughs> right? Right. But let's say that we're going to um, we don't have the entourage right now. So what does that look like? <laughs> I'm sad about that. Like, we don't have the entourage, and in my heart, I was like, wah wah. <laughs> but but in lieu of the entourage, mm-hmm. what are the you know what can that look like um, uh, today? Right. So mm-hmm. so um, you know what what does that look like for you? Self care for me looks like. Oh. May I interrupt you? I'm yes. sorry. Let's start with what, what it's not. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's easier. For, to, yeah. for some reason, it's easier for me to start out with what it's not mm-hmm. and kind of sweep those things off the table. Mm-hmm. And then and then that kind of narrows the field. Okay. That's why there was like a, st- a moment. Because you were like, I don't want to go like, in this direction. <laughs> it's hard for me to, to voice it. Mm-hmm. What it's not. It is not. Um, it is, it's not shopping trips. Mm-hmm. It's not um, hanging out with large groups of people. It's... Uh, it's not social media mm-hmm. for me. Do you me. mean in general or for you? For me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it's, it's not anything that I would see on the cover of a magazine. Ooh. Okay. Okay. And therefore makes it a lot harder as, as something to sell me. To define, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sell me, to, to define like culturally. But it's just, self-care, self-care is not all of those things. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Because for me, it's found in these moments of awareness where mm-hmm. I, I, I have to like, stop, hold up, Leilani, what is going on? And then, and then looking inward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when I describe what it's not, it makes it a little easier for me to, okay, turn yeah, what about you? Yeah. What is it not for you? So for me, it's not, it, um, okay. I'm, and again, this is, I'm bouncing off of some social cues and social mm-hmm, norms mm-hmm. that I, that, that have, have kind of been fed to me. So for me, it's not just an indulgence. It's not, I mean, it can be, mm-hmm. but it's not just indulging myself, nor is it like just, Oh, spoiling mm-hmm. myself or, um, or self soothing. It's actually more, um, a sense of really just like, like that entourage giving myself what I need. Mm. I mean, it's, you know, essentially that, that idea of, like you said, taking a moment and just saying, okay, now my instinct might be to mm-hmm. go get a, uh, uh, you know, a nice hunk of chocolate cake, but is that, that would be self soothing, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong. With, there's nothing wrong with self soothing. Oh. Self soothing can be self soothing can be self care too, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes self soothing is just self soothing, right? Oh, the- you're blowing my mind. <laughs> you're blowing my mind. So the difference between self soothing and mm-hmm. self care, mm-hmm. it's like a Venn diagram. Sometimes mm-hmm. they can overlap, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. sometimes they're not. So I need to mm-hmm. check in with myself mm-hmm. and say, Leilani, am I self soothing mm-hmm. or am I? Is it self care? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna. <laughs> And, and, and I, I can't say this enough. Sometimes you just do, you need to, to bring the anxiety level down. You need to, you know, do something like that and, and you need self-soothing. Having said that, um, often what will be self-soothing for me in that, those five seconds will not necessarily be a long-term soothing Mm -hmm. or, or, or caring for myself. And Mm so that's, and, and I think that maybe that, that's the, um, a part of the difference for me Mm -hmm. is that. You know what's best for me in the long term. Yeah. What's really going to actually make me happier, healthier, better, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. And that's self care. Can I? Mm-hmm. Can I? I wanted to share one thing mm-hmm. that whenever you brought that up, uh, I have, I have had moments that have been incredibly hard where I have practiced self care, and the therapist that I was seeing at that time told me, "You have to let go." of what other people are going to think. You have to let go of that. Yes. You have to yes. you have to just do what is right for you and let go. And maybe to some of our listeners are like, "Yeah. <laughs> duh." But <laughs> that is not- <laughs> But for me, and it sounds like for you, no, yeah, yeah. like that is incredibly difficult for mm-hmm. me because because of so many parts of who I am are about community and connection 
And that's just me personally as like the way I show up as a human. That's true for me. And I'm sure on some level it's true for everyone. For me, it's like really true. <laughs> like really, that's a really intense thing. But um, I would say some of my most transformative experiences have been where I have practiced self-care in a way that has landed with others in a w- where they have accused me of being they very, don't get it yeah they've accused mm-hmm. me of being very selfish mm-hmm. and um and some of those experiences have been some of the most transformative mm-hmm. for me mm-hmm. um, they've been really painful but in a way like what you said about self-soothing like it may have soothed me in the moment or however whatever amount of time but in the long run that would that was that would not have been taking care of me mm-hmm. it, it, it's interesting interesting that you said that because for me, a lot of it, like you said, if it's something that it would be on the cover of a magazine or something mm-hmm. like that, that that's probably not it for you. And I and I agree because <clears throat> part of self care for me, before I can even get to the self care, I have to filter out, you know, the the messages of society and the you know the demands and of what that looks like, or of my ego, mm-hmm. right? Oh um, yeah, you know, of, of, of what self care really looks like, and um, and and at least initially to um to be able to really practice self-care, I had to think of it as in service to others. You know, so so the idea being, you know, you can give and give and give and give and then until you crap out and then you can no longer give. So self-care for me was just basically keeping myself going so I could continue to, to, to help somebody else. And at, for a couple of decades, that worked because I... Um, I think ultimately I didn't feel like I deserved to, to, to take care of myself. I, I, I didn't deserve, I, I felt, I, I think for a long time I felt as if it was indulgent or I was spoiling myself or, you know, I'm pampering myself and I don't really, you know, I don't really need to do this. I need to get out there and, you know, go take care of my students or go help clean someone's house or whatever, you know? So, and so the only way I could give myself permission, that's the Mm -hmm. word. Okay. Mm -hmm. The only word I could, way I could give myself permission was to say, I'm just, I've got to refill the well so that I can continue to, to be there. I think that's one of the reasons why self care feels so radical to me. So, so radical and so countercultural and like, so for me, it like lights a fire in me in the same way I feel about a lot of things politically and about my about my faith, but it just feels like this pushing back against all of these things that have been just like icky, sticky, dumped on me, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. as a as a woman. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So by practicing self care, <clears throat> it just pushes back against all that, and mm-hmm. maybe to get closer to the end of our what is it not um, can make some can really trigger people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things I, I, I said, you know, fig, uh, kind of filtering out, um, you know, the messages of the of the the dominant culture, because a lot of self care, and I'm using air quotes, <laughs> a lot of self care was drinking or drugging mm-hmm. or or eating or having you know as being you know having as much sex as you possibly can, and it was really it wasn't actually. Um, helping you to to deal and to get better, it was just numbing you. Mm. And did we talk? Did we have an episode on on this? No, I guess not. Mm-mm. Okay, all right. Well, we need to. I would agree. <laughs> or, yeah, <laughs> but but um, and so so what I ha- <clears throat> what I had to as I was filtering out that, then I had to you know f- you know like you're digging through the pile of shit looking mm-hmm. for the diamond at the bottom. Um, I had. I've never done that, but I know I was just. <laughs> oh, I was okay, just think of it as when you, when you go mining for quartz and stuff. Okay, you, okay yeah, yeah we crystal go. digging, D- crystal Going, digging, digging through go. all the mud to find the crystal. There we there go. There we go. That's a. Pr- <laughs> that's, a- <laughs> that's something we can at least say we have done. Okay, yes, yeah, but but yeah, because no, um, I don't. As a rule, I don't dig through shit. Um, she's like, she's looking at her glass, like. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> so, but that idea of you've got to get through all. I have to get through all of that before I can actually figure out what do I need in this situation? Mm-hmm. What do I, you know, what's the thing that's going to, to make me smile or make me feel better or open my heart or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and so um, that's been a tough row for me to, to hoe. I, I have to say I'm, I'm getting better at it, but, um, but yeah. So, um, so what are some of the things that you do that are uh, instances of self care? Uh, so I, lo- I like to divide self-care up for me into the different parts of me, like different ways to engage with different parts of me. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 
So there are things that I can do for my body. Mm -hmm. There are things that I can do for my mind. Mm -hmm. There are things that I can do for my spirit. You know, um, so I like to kind of think about it there uh, that way because in that way I can um, kind of like find out where the fire is. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. am I getting sick? Okay, that probably means that I should like move to the body, Mm -hmm. you know, and Mm -hmm. and it probably is a symptom that there's stuff going on in the other houses as well. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. like, let's move, let's zone in on the, Mm -hmm. on the, the body section and start doing some self care there, move and then moving outward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, but I, I, uh, I loved like everything for, for my body, everything from, uh, Epsom salt baths, because Mm. I do a lot of, of um, like acrobatics and dance and hand balancing. So my body is often sore. Like I'll wake up in the mm-hmm. middle of the night with aching a lot. Um, so like Epsom salt baths are, are like times to give myself quiet. They take care of my body, mm-hmm. you know, like, so they do a lot for me. Um, but even things like, uh, okay. My, so when I, you know, I, I've been sharing a lot recently about therapy. My therapist told me I should stop going to the gym so often. She told me I should go less. Um, and, uh, and, and I was like, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'll start with other ideas that you've given me. <laughs> which are really valid. And which good. I like. <laughs> Some of which I don't like, but mm-hmm. I will put into place. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm going to, I'm going to say no to that Mm -hmm. because, and, and I get it. Like she doesn't know me super well. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we haven't been working together very long, but, um, the gym is like really important to me. And, you know, I'm either there with friends, which is like self care. Mm -hmm. Like these people Mm -hmm. are Mm -hmm. really good friends of mine. People who love me and care about me and know me and witness me, or I'm by myself. And then I have my earbuds in, I'm listening to like my favorite music I'm working. And and, like, for me, it's just, I never leave the gym and feel like, well, that wasn't a waste of my time. I wish I wouldn't have, you know, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Uh, even Mm -hmm. on my most frustrating days where like, maybe I don't do as well as I wanted. I Mm -hmm. leave and I feel, I feel better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a sign of self, uh, like a a good self care practice, Mm -hmm. which is like, afterwards I look back and even if I wasn't like all in like on my game, Mm -hmm. I look back and I think that was, that was a good choice. Mm -hmm. Even if it was hard to do, that was a good choice. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Sorry. No, 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 I I didn't know if you, I didn't know if you had more, (laughs) but yeah. So, um, I, I love that idea of, you know, looking back because I think some of the, the numbing activities are things that feel good in the moment or, or mm-hmm. don't feel, or you don't feel right. Cause that's right. the, the, the that's idea the, of numbing. Yeah. But then when you like the next day, you're like, shit, why did I drink so much? Or why did I do this so much? Or I slept with them, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and so that idea, you know, if it, <laughs> a friend of mine used to say, if you can't say, if you can't tell your mother, you shouldn't be doing it. I kind of mod- modified that a little bit because <laughs> my, my mother yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but but if you can't if you can't be proud of it later, or mm. if you can't say that that was a good choice later, then if you can kind of remember the later while you're doing it, that might have some sort of effect, right? Yeah, oh, I love that. And, that. and 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 that might be a good marker for mm-hmm. for that. Um, so for me, do I have for for me? It's basically it's kind of the same thing. Kind of listening to my body. Um, I think the hardest thing for me in that because I negated my intuition for so many decades for so long that I didn't know what my voice was telling me. So, um, so really getting to know what my voice was as opposed to the voices of the society and culture and, you know, all of those demands, et cetera, um, I think was important for, it is important for me and I'm still, I'm still not there yet, but I'm so much better than I was like 20 years ago, 10, 10, 20 years ago that, um, uh, a large part of that is just being still because often my body or my spirit, my heart knows what I need, but I have to slow down enough and, you know, stop, stop, you know, get off the treadmill um, uh, and, and quiet down enough so that I can listen to it. So a large part of knowing what my, what I need for my self care was just being able to listen and let my body or, or my heart or my, whatever, tell me, tell me what that is. Um, so yeah. 
um, that you mentioned mm-hmm. getting off the treadmill. Mm-hmm. I know in our in a previous episode where we were interviewing the witches next door, we mm-hmm. talked about mm-hmm. mystery blindness mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. The, the concept that we're so busy with life that we forget to see like these like the, this magnificence mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. mystery all mm-hmm. with a capital M all around us. Like like we shared in our mm-hmm. check in like with the moon, the mm-hmm. moon necklaces. Mm-hmm. You know, if I was rushing, and there there are plenty of times in my life where I would not have realized what had happened with that mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. oh right yeah 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 but yeah. Mm-hmm. and i feel like it's the same thing here and in a lot of ways i just feel like so much of of healing and wholeness mm-hmm. is is overcoming my myself yeah for if, and, and for me myself tends to be well there's judgment but there's a lot of busyness mm-hmm. and and it's the busyness that keeps me from actually even thinking you know recognizing that i need self-care mm-hmm. and then you know, oh, I've got to do this first. I've got to do that first, and and that's something that I'm kind of working my way through um, now. Um, and 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 to come back to what we what mm-hmm. I said like already a jillion mm-hmm. times, but that's one of the reasons why self care feels so radical. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we sold by like our culture at large? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like being being busy, being better, being faster, mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. thinner, being mm-hmm. louder, being prettier, being mm-hmm. like all of these things. And then it's like, what if I stopped with all of that? Mm-hmm. And focused on what I have and mm-hmm. take care of this. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that is just so radical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Very much so. Um, so I, I, I didn't, how about we move into um, the, you know, we've been talking about what it is and what it isn't. Like, why should we care? <laughs> why, why? why should we self care? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, what's. What, what, why is it so important? You mentioned, you know, how um, in some of this, maybe in schools, et cetera, that it's kind of this, it's now this little, this phrase, this mantra that's used and, and people say it's important, but they must not think it because if they did, they'd actually do the thing and not, Mm -hmm. not do performative self-care. Performative self-care. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for that. Yes, yes that is exactly you know? what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so in your opinion, what, what you know, why is it so important? Well, I, so I think it's so important because I never use these words until mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But as you said, it gets us off of the treadmill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's so important because it it gets at what I think is one of my major issues in my life, which is. I'm so busy living, I forget to live. Mm, mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. and then what ends up happening is my house is on fire. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I will put that out as soon as I finish the thing. And then I get over there, the you know, and then my house is burned down. Mm-hmm. And the house is me, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that self-care is a way that I can, if I am paying attention enough, I can smell the smoke maybe before the fire gets mm-hmm, out of mm-hmm, control mm-hmm. or even before that I can notice that my outlet needs replaced or something. Mm-hmm. I was going right? to say, yeah, <laughs> like, like you can be proactive and yeah, actually create a yeah. situation where the fire won't happen. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like I am, I'm like on it mm-hmm. and I notice that the outlet needs to be replaced mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that I don't like, you know, spark mm-hmm. a fire. But other times I, I notice that something is happening. Mm -hmm. Like most recently during the pandemic, like I noticed that I was having these like emotional Mm -hmm. outburst thingies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the heck is this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This isn't Leilani. Like Mm -hmm. this isn't, this isn't how I show up. And then through that, I was able to unpack, but there are so many versions of me that would not have, have done that. And then the house, you know, the house would have caught on fire, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So that's why I think it's important. It is that it's, it's a way of uh, of mitigating some really serious things, and and I don't want it, I don't want my life to be constantly putting out house fires, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then living with those consequences. What about you? What do you think? Yeah, so I'm glad you asked because <laughs> <laughs> now I have to think about it. So here, I think a a big portion of it for me is. Um, when 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 i am when i'm on my game in terms of self care i'm prioritizing i'm seeing me the way i am and i'm making that a priority making seeing me a priority <sighs> that's that's hard um and when when i'm in the self care groove it's not 
Mm. So much of self-care, I think, so much of my self-care practice right now is kind of after the effect. Like, okay, getting massages because I'm tense. You know, so so when I'm in the groove, I'm, like you say, proactive. And um, I'm actually keeping myself in a state of of perfection. Um, you know, what, you know, and, and perfection, not meaning, you know, not this idea where everything, like I'm skinny, I'm this, I'm that, you know, mm-hmm. but my body is doing what it does best. My mind is doing what mm-hmm. it does best. My heart is open. You know, I'm, I'm, and, and so get, so the, the problem is first I've got to get to that state. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where a lot of my self care is, is directed right now. It's getting, getting to that state. And then hopefully I'll get to that state or, or, you know, it's, it's always a balance, right? So you're never, it's never, I'm perfect. It's always, you can't see this, but my, have like, like my finger is leaning one way or the <laughs> other, but it, it's basically you're balancing. And when and people think balancing means you're totally static and, oh, you would be able to talk a little bit about that, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> but it's, a, it's just a series of balance, a series of like muscular changes to keep, keep, you keep a certain look but everything is still kind of moving in the uh, fun fact even yeah. whenever you're standing mm-hmm. in a balanced mm-hmm. way on your feet or mm-hmm. your hands mm-hmm. your body is doing constantly doing micro balances exactly. with your toes or your fingers exactly. and your ankles mm-hmm. so yeah that's what i even mean, so when you mm-hmm. appear still yeah it's just it's not still it's the appearance of being still and your body is doing all of the things mm-hmm. to make it look that way mm-hmm. and so so for me the state of perfection is just recognizing that it's never going to be quote unquote perfect mm-hmm. it's always going to be a balance and getting myself to that balance and then figuring out all the wonderful things that i can do to make balancing so much easier right that's beautiful yeah i think so i think so and it, it, it's, it's, it's a goal yeah <laughs> right it's beautiful and i'm like yes and also uh, as someone who loves mm-hmm. you and has mm-hmm. had the, mm-hmm. the gift of getting to witness you mm-hmm. like on retreat in your home mm-hmm. and in ritual, I see you mm-hmm. doing that frequently. Oh, good. No, I'm no, so I'm, glad. And of course, like I'm not inside of you. So yeah, maybe, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. maybe it was too late mm-hmm. or not mm-hmm. as soon mm-hmm. as you would like mm-hmm. or not exactly what you needed. But you are someone that I look at and I see you doing these things. I'm so, that, that, thank you. First of all, I feel seen. <laughs> and thank you because that's, I'm I'm trying. And so I'm, you know, or uh, I'm doing, I am, I amming, I'm amming. <laughs> and, and it sounds like I'm amming it. I'm doing it more than um, I'm not doing it. So thank you. I appreciate hearing that. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a balance. It literally mm-hmm. is a balance. So um, yeah. And um, one of the things, um, oh yeah, I was just saying that <laughs> to kind of, you know, one of the ways that I kept that going, I was, I mentioned on a number of occasions that I'm Enneagram two or three, it depends on who you talk to and what, which quiz I've done. But, um, that idea of, you know, giving, um, I, um, the idea of being of service to someone is something that's super powerful for me. Mm -hmm. And so often the way I can take care of myself is, um, you know, the analogy when you're on the plane and they say, put your, your mask on first and then you can help someone else. Because if you don't, if you, if you're fumbling, trying to help them and you haven't put yours on, you might pass out before you can help them. So for the longest time to keep myself going, I would use that analogy. Like I have to take care of myself so that I can continue to do good work. And, and my goal is to make it less a means to an end mm-hmm. and more just not even an end or a goal itself, but just a, a thing that is right. And so that I don't have to work towards that. It doesn't have to be, I should do this because it's just a matter of that's who I am. So I love that. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of times for me, sometimes I have to release the reason why mm-hmm, and just mm-hmm. be like, this is Clearly, I need to do this. If this is my motivation for now, I'll work on the motivation later. I just need time and practice. That's so good. And then mm-hmm. we can, and I can like work on the motivation behind the time mm-hmm. and the practice, mm-hmm. but I just need to get the time and the practice. Mm-hmm. And if it's, you know, because like, oh, well, they'll eventually help someone else if I do this as an Enneagram too, that speaks to me. So like, you know, there've been plenty of times where that's where I've gone. Mm-hmm. Um, or sometimes it's revenge for me. I'm like, I am going to be so whatever to get back at that, per- you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And it's like, well, yeah. and it's like, well, you know what? That's not exactly the best motivation to but, whatever right. it is that I'm wanting to do. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, what's the, the phrase that living well is the best revenge. Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, and then, and then 
what I know to be true about myself is that's not who I am. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like, let's just get me into this practice. Whatever. Once, once like things have calmed down, mm-hmm. I can sort all of that out. And of course, I land someplace different. Mm-hmm, I, le- mm-hmm, I land, mm-hmm. I land at a more like authentic part of me. But mm-hmm. I just got to release like that, mm-hmm. wanting to be mm-hmm. perfect, have the yeah, perfect intent yeah. going in, yeah. and just get in. Mm-hmm. And I, that's a big a part of the struggle for me is not not well getting in, but also trying to decide when it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. So I, um, so I would hope that you know, like you maybe give me a little bit of insight into your thinking as you're, you, like you say, you want to, in the moment you want to determine, you know, these mm-hmm. things. So what does that look like for you? I, that's such a great question. Thanks for asking mm-hmm. that. I think, um, like you said, getting off that treadmill. I, it's ta- it's this like really interesting self, like self inward looking mm-hmm. and thinking. In this moment, what is it that I need? Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. what what was self care once might not be self care now wow. for me. Wow. Okay. Um, what you know, and I, what was self care for someone that I love, and they were like, "Hey, I did this. It really helped. You're having issues with this same thing. You should try this." That might not fit for me, and I think and and that's a beauty and something that is a challenge, right? Is that I and also part of a similar practice for me of being a witch. I am my own expert Mm -hmm. and I have to trust myself. And so I am responsible for figuring it out for me and no one else can tell me what that is. You know, my therapist can take a good guess, but (laughs) and you'll say, and that's a very good guess. Thank you so much for that feedback. I hear the intent behind your feedback (laughs) and, (laughs) and I'm not going to do it. Uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. like side note, she Mm -hmm. has told me a lot of things that she, I, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. want, but are where I think spot on. Yeah, but very this, helpful. Yes, but this is like one very limited, isolated incident where mm-hmm. I disagreed with her over <laughs> the years, right? But, um, but I think uh, like really focusing on what do I need in this moment, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it might not be what's right for someone else. It might not be what worked for me before. And in fact, I ran into this this weekend. There's a dance competition coming up next weekend, and previous to the pandemic going to a dance competition would have been this amazing act of self-care for me. I pull myself out of my life for a week. I dance until 4 a.m. You know, I'm just so totally focused on me. My body is happy. I come back lighter and energized and it's just so wonderful. You know, and I go and I work harder and I like all areas of my life are improved. And I'm, and I noticed I was angry at myself because I, I had chosen not to go. Oh, wow. It's next weekend. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I had chosen not to go. And, and part of it was like, you know, this is what you like, this always works for you. Why aren't you doing this? <laughs> yeah. Well, it worked for me before the pandemic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. me right now, I don't think could handle it. Mm-hmm, it's too mm-hmm, much. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. too, it's too it's much. Stressing. It's too, mm-hmm. yeah, it's mm-hmm. too stressful, too intense, too long, too many people. And I think I would just, I don't think it would be good, but I, I could even struggling with myself to tell myself that like, there's an argument inside of me and it's like, <laughs> Suck it up, Buttercup, and just go. <laughs> and then the other part of me is like, "Calm down." <laughs> Said with such love. <laughs> That's like here in my head. Straighten your ponytail and get your ass to that dance competition. And then there's another part of me that's like. That that's that's a different version mm-hmm. of you, Leilani. Mm-hmm. The Leilani that's showing up right now. That's not going to serve you. Mm-hmm. And that very calm, you know, confidently mm-hmm. spoken but quiet part of me mm-hmm. is just getting like yelled at by the other part of me. <laughs> Oh, I love that image. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, neat. One thing that we have we've kind of written down here is self care is witchy as fuck. It's waff. It's waff. <laughs> it's waff. Um, would you care to to share? Yeah. Okay. So I think going back to something we've spoken about before, I think it's really radical and it pushes back against a lot of things in our culture, which I also think is witchy as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think this idea of I am my own expert. I am, and I am in charge of myself and I am therefore in charge of self-maintenance and keeping my authenticity and my energy up in the way that it needs to be. So I think that it's incredibly witchy when I look at it from, from that perspective and I have to get past all these cultural messages and, and things so that I can do my own personal magic so that to take care of myself to then do my magic. That is such a, 
excellent point. I, I kind of froze when you were saying that because, <laughs> you know, that idea, like you say, you are your own, did you say expert or authority? Mm-hmm. You're, you're own, your own. So we're, we get these messages. There's, you know, people say, well, when this happens, you should do this. And when that's mm-hmm. happened, as if we're all kind of cut from the same cloth. And so, um, first of all, I love the point that you made about just being witchy is counterculture, countercultural. And then the idea of, of no matter what people say of saying, this is true for me. This leads back to our first episode. Was that authenticity? Yeah. yeah. You know, that this is true for me. I, particularly when people give you advice, Mm -hmm. thank you very much. And, um, and what I, if you want to respond to it and what I think is best for me is blah. Mm -hmm. And that, but that's so hard because we're not supported in that type of thinking. And so, so good on you. Good on you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to share a story about yeah, our sure. circle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, years ago in our circle, uh, and you were a part of this process, mm-hmm. years ago in our circle, it was identified that we the, the priestesses were having burnout. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were mm-hmm. overworked. And none of us told any of the other... Pre- we all, yeah, we all yeah. felt as if it's just it's, me. It's just and, me, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which I think is reflective of our culture, right? It, this must be a me problem, not a we problem, mm-hmm. because it's just... Mm-hmm. Like Mm -hmm. everybody else seems to be doing fine. I should be better. I should be stronger. I should be doing more. I I'm weak. I'm not good Mm -hmm. enough. Whatever it is that we think. Right. Well, then we all came together for a retreat and we figured out that everyone, (laughs) literally all of us Mm -hmm. were feeling this same way. And, um, and because of that, and this is something that has really inspired my own life. We, we totally, uh, overhauled our circle Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into a, a way that would make it sustainable. That's exactly right. Yeah. For for everyone, not just us, yeah, yeah. but Dram- for everyone. Dramatically, I mean, literally throughout the basic premises of what we were doing and saying, now, what if we just start it from scratch? And mm-hmm. we, we had some women who, who sat and kind of figured that out and was... It was so radical for us. Um, and, 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 and it was radical for a number of people in our, our circle, I think. Did we, like, go to half the number of yeah. women that we had originally? Yeah, we... I mean, before, before the process started? I remember... And this isn't a judgment on them or anything. No, but no, no and, that wasn't their jam. But like, there were some people that there were some people who were like, "This is great. I, it's not for me," and they mm-hmm, left, mm-hmm. which I totally honor. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting to me. There were some women that it pissed, it pissed off. They were furious. It was. Yeah. yeah. It was, which mm-hmm. I did not expect. I expected mm-hmm. some people to, you know, mm-hmm. be like, "This is, this is yeah. not not for me." Mm-hmm. You know, best of luck. Mm-hmm. But the anger that it sparked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and the pushback from some really surprised me. And mm-hmm. what I realized was like, that is a, that is a symptom of this resistance to this practice of self-care. Mm-hmm. Self-care and self-responsibility, yes. right? Yes. Because when you take risk, if you're taking responsibility for your self-care, you can't blame anyone else. If you're, you know, things are not going well and that's, that's radical. We're, we're kind of encouraged in our culture now to blame some, mm-hmm. someone or someone else for, for our problems. And mm-hmm. I think that's witchy as fuck, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if, mm-hmm. if, if my life is not going the way that mm-hmm. I want, like I have to go to myself. Mm-hmm. And of course mm-hmm. now, of course there are things outside oh, of yeah, ourselves. Totally. So yeah. I'm not, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. like I, I, I do understand that there are things mm-hmm. going on beyond our control mm-hmm. and for certain things in my life, I am, I am the one that is to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. And when I start sensing that I want to blame others, that's a good cue for me to mm-hmm. say, I need to look at this, mm-hmm. probably practice some self care because hold up. <laughs> hold up, get off the treadmill. Right. <laughs> Or, yeah. like, jump into some major cultural reform mm-hmm, and, like, mm-hmm. go to a protest or something. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but I, I just I just did a, an intensive this past weekend, and one of the things that the, um, the facilitator said is that we can't control the outside world, but we can control our response to it. Mm. Um, and so a part of that response is, okay, so this is the crap that's going on around me right now. How can I best be myself within the limitations of the world around me? And so self-care, I think, is that mitigating factor, is that, that kind of, um, that kind of uh, um, uh, corridor or, uh, or portal between where you are and the outside world and how you're going to interact with it. And, um, and so, yeah, yeah. I think that, um, like, when you, when you just said, like, that corridor to the outside world, how mm-hmm. I'm going to interact with it. That's one of the things I think that makes self-care so witchy that we, 
I, I'm going to speak for me as a witch, mm-hmm. as a witch, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what I what I see with a lot of other people who claim that title as a witch. I have this tool. I have this magical tool of magic at my at in my ritual technology, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. kit and my technology for life kit uh, that I can use to shape myself and the world around me. And so whenever I think about how can I incorporate my witchiness into my self-care, for me, making a t- my tea every morning is really mm. a practice of self-care. But then, like, what if I up my ante and what if I added magic to my tea? What if, what if like, um, the woman that we had on uh, one of our podcast episodes earlier, Setsuna, talked about stirring intent into her tea Mm -hmm. what if Mm -hmm. i stirred my self-care intent into my Mm -hmm. tea what if i used magical bath salts Mm -hmm. you know that were energized by our circle in my bath you know so it's like i can i can i can do so much with with the practice of self-care but i can do so much more Mm -hmm. if i Mm -hmm. practice self-care with my magic Mm -hmm. added totally so you're gonna laugh okay (laughs) be prepared okay um so one way that i'm practicing so this is just a, like a little bit of mental quiet. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, I play video games on my phone uh-huh. and I'm cheap. So I never get the paid version. I always get the one with the ads. Okay. <laughs> and so what I do is, you know, it used to be I'm like playing my game or whatever. And then, you know, when you go to your next level or something, there's an ad that pops up. And I use and try to keep hitting the, you know, the, 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 the <laughs> stuff. X, 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 X. <laughs> And then it would send you to like to where you can go buy it, and, all, and then I'd be so frustrated. Now I just close my eyes and I have a couple of phrases that I say to myself, and so I take a moment, <laughs> a moment of quiet. So I use that as my reminder. My video game ads give me a moment to just stop and take a little, take a little bit of inventory, and see where I am. Usually I'm in the bathroom, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> So, but I mean, internally, an internal inventory. And, um, and then I, you know, for 27 seconds, if it's the um, QuickBooks ad, just saying, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's 30, but, you know, just close my, instead of, you know, because I, I don't want to look at, so the, half the problem is I don't want to look at the ads because I know they're subliminal mm-hmm. and I know they're trying to give it, convince me to buy stuff, um, which is why I have so many games on there because the ads for the games. But anyway, um, so I close my eyes and I use that as a moment to... Um, to allow myself to refresh emotionally before I start like trying to <laughs> start hitting a button and then play the next the next level or whatever. I find that so <laughs> radical, though. You're like, I, like not only am I not going to look at you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to turn inward. QuickBooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's the latest thing that I I'm. Love it. <laughs> The latest thing that I'm going to, but but let's actually talk about some of our practices. So what kind okay. of, um, so you you particularly you were saying that you know what was useful maybe a few years ago may not be useful now. So what kind of self care practices are you using or valuing right now? Uh, so I, with the help of my therapist, mm-hmm. this most recent go around because I do listen to what she has to say most of the time. Because <laughs> um, some good, she, like she yes, some good a lot things. of mm-hmm. right. Um, I. So I've been, my, my big self-care push is I've been treating my nighttime routine as medicine. Mm. Just like I, I would take a pill every night if I was Mm -hmm. on an antibiotic Mm -hmm. or some sort Mm -hmm. of medication. I am, I am like, I have like my, my nighttime, my sleep is my medicine. That sounds so rich and juicy. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Uh, And it's, so it's it's a whole thing that I, that I've, I've figured out and from like internal like looking more inward also like you know like what my therapist has told me what science says so like i have started a thing where like after a certain period of time i don't take there's nothing going in so there's mm-hmm, no like mm-hmm. podcast or music or anything that goes in it's wow it, it, yeah oh, gosh. so which is hard for me because i'm the type of person that listens to npr right until like mm-hmm. i'm in bed and i'm like alexa's <laughs> turn off npr and then i go to bed mm-hmm. but um but like no, none of that, and then and then there's a, a time for meditation, mm-hmm. and then I I go to bed. That sounds so, so wondrous. Thank you. It mm-hmm. it is so I so I I sound like I think I sound like really cool mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. guru like mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, the truth of it is, it, it's really hard. Mm-hmm. It's it's really <laughs> I hard. Can imagine. And like last night, I realized way too late that I was still watching this TV show <laughs> because I was having all this anxiety mm-hmm. about this show that I was watching, and I was like. <gasps> 
and I paused the show to take an emotional break because it was so intense. <laughs> It's the show yeah. called Made, M A I D. Oh, you were telling me about you. Yeah. I think that was one of your check ins a while yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah. So it's taken me a while to get through, clearly. It's months yeah, later. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I get so. And then I look it down and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I am mm-hmm. not following my sleep as medicine routine. So I'm not saying that I'm perfect. No. You know, it is a practice mm-hmm. uh, and it's hard. And I feel like I'm bumping into so many things personally and culturally by trying to to make this time sacred to me. Wow, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you're literally stepping away from cultural norms to do that. I am. Right? It's right? hard. Yeah. It's really hard. I, <laughs> well, that's why they call it a practice. Yeah. Because, you know, closer approximations of perfection is, is how I think about it. Wow, what? that's 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 really... I, I Thank you for sharing that with thank me. Thank you. Yeah. What about you? Do you have any self-care practices? Um. Yeah, so um, a couple of things. I, I have been journaling more um and that for me again it's trying to get get more in touch with that voice you know the calm voice not the one that's screaming like you, <laughs> the, the screaming voice i hear quite a bit um but you know that calm voice um you know so so finding quiet and kind of that same thing for me i have like it's not television for me it's shutting off the damn laptop you know because i will i read fan fiction i write fan fiction i you know and then i yeah, i don't follow clickbait per se but i get t- way too many emails about travel and things like that that i follow and stuff and so the temptation is always to do one more or to play one more video game on my phone or something like that so so finding the quietness is a big thing for me and and i love your idea of taking some time um at the, at night i i keep saying I'm going to do it. I actually have a reminder on my phone. I put, um, I have blue blockers on so that, oh, okay. you know, so mm-hmm. what, and actually I should just like close the computer, but you know, <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. I right? love that. that. That's a good progression towards yeah, it. it. Exactly. So I at least do, I try to do that when I try to remember, um, but really med- you know, trying to meditate and, and, you know, sometimes my practice is going strong. It's the waxing period <laughs> and often it's waning, so, <laughs> but, but still it is a, a practice that I, just, I aspire to. I love just walking along the trails, um, with, sn- with my dog mm-hmm. and, um, and so getting out in nature. Um, one thing that I did uh, so much last year and, and during when the, when we first started the, um, lockdown and I haven't yet done it because it's just been too cold is spending time out on my back porch. And so I need to get out there. It's it's kind of leaf blown. And I, I went out there. It was like, ew. It would take me too long. to You know, like I wanted to go out there for like a 15-minute thing. But before I could relax for 15 minutes, I'd have to spend like 45 minutes to clean it. So, so I haven't really been, been able to do that. But I think a lot of it for me is quietness. <clears throat> um, one thing that I have been doing more regularly, because actually a friend of mine is um, getting her massage, uh, de- uh, massage certificate. Mm-hmm. And so she needs someone to practice on. So I've been going and getting a massage like every couple of weeks. Oh my gosh. So yeah. You're so helpful. I know. <laughs> I know. See, I'm helping her. It's yeah, a win-win. It's a it's, win-win. It's, yes. Yeah. So I'm helping her. She's getting more practice. She's getting her hours in towards the certification and I'm getting a massage every other week. So I, I want to continue to do that. One of the things that, um, and I don't know if we've mentioned this, but as an older woman who's not sexually active, um, I find that I don't. And, and because of the pandemic, I think that's a part of it too. I find that I'm getting like I'm getting skin sick, you know, like um, oh, like, like contact, yeah, uh-huh. it's contact. And so the massage really helps mm. that. Um, mm-hmm. I remember, oh, this was easily thirty years ago. I was kind of going through the same the, the dry a dry spell, <laughs> um, and um, and it was the same thing where I was just not getting any con- any physical contact. And I remember the first time I had a massage. It uh, it might have been the first time in a couple of years. I just cried during the whole thing. I, I was just sobbing during the whole thing. And I remember the massage therapist, she, she said something. I said, oh, I'm fine. Really, really. And then later we talked and she said that has happened to her before, um, particularly with older people, which I am now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, because you, you, you get, you get pushed out of kind of the stream of human interaction and you don't realize, and I don't realize how much touch, you know, is important. You know, so anyway, so that's a really important thing for me and something that I'm going to, that I used to do and I haven't because of the pandemic and I'm going to start adding it back in or many petties. You know, just go oh because, because someone is basically like kneeling at your feet, taking care of your feet. It's beautiful. And, you know, quite frankly, like uh, it's <laughs> as you get older, it's harder to get down there and, <laughs> and work on the work on your rocky pigs, as my friend used to say. So. 
So that, and that's very pampering. That's, that's something that I would have considered years ago an indulgence. And it may still be, but it's something that just knowing, just having that contact, the physical contact, resting my feet and having someone work on my feet that I don't have to do. And, and then I come out of it looking cute and feeling, feeling pretty, you know, so. So I think that's a large part of it for me. Um, ooh, and then making music, as you know. You mm-hmm. know uh, what, one thing that I started doing I hadn't done in a long time is I hadn't been playing the piano. I've been, you know, drumming and all this other kind of stuff. And But I've gone back and I've gotten out my Beethoven sonatas and, you know, playing through those. So that's been super, super helpful. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's been a lot of it. Um, one thing that I didn't realize, because it's been different on Zoom, but particularly after this last ritual that we were talking about where I shouldn't mention, um, I, in, in, we might have to cut this, but um, well, a part of it, we were totally draped. Mm-hmm. And um, and so when I'm draped, like oh, it's covering my face, um, I, I can really like sink into, even though I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of linear because, you know, we have to make sure we do what we're supposed to do, but it's easier to kind of sink into it. So afterwards, I was fine driving home, but that night I was just kind of, Ooh, <laughs> so I, and, and I remember that, but we haven't, ha- I haven't had that effect with zoom rituals. So ritual aftermath for me mm-hmm. is, um, is another way of, of taking care of myself because yeah. One thing I'd like to jump into before we move on to the poem mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we have, mm-hmm. um, is just, uh, this has been a lot, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. uh, for us to talk and it's been, we've talked for, uh, probably a little, about an hour ish, mm-hmm. but, um, I think I just want to come back to the concept that this is a challenge, I think. And I, and, and I think that it's such a challenge for a lot of reasons, but especially reasons that have been imposed onto us by the culture at large, by gender stereotypes, Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. things that are not things that I would say are not my own, but that have been placed on me. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I just would like to send our listeners, uh, if they're struggling with this, just send them some, some like love and some understanding Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then, and then maybe offer them some, I don't know what to say. I don't want to say advice, Mm -hmm. offer them some suggestion Mm -hmm. or, or maybe share with some, some of our experience Mm -hmm. and some of something, some things that have felt good for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like my biggest offering that I would say is for me, trying not to, f- to fix everything at once, but mm-hmm. instead starting small, mm-hmm. even if it's, um, a 30 second self-care practice every day. Um, because one of the things that I was reading about self-care is that it's not supposed to be like a one and done, <laughs> like it's a practice, right? Mm-hmm, it's a mm-hmm, continued thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and, and actually tying it to something mundane and repetitive that you're already doing. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. while I brush my teeth, I'm going to say three things that I'm grateful for. Mm-hmm. Or while I'm sitting in my car at the stoplight before I mm-hmm. turn into my office, I'm mm-hmm. going to take three deep breaths, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, so, so something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Or, or while I'm waiting for my ads to load in my video <laughs> game, I can take a moment to just kind of uh-huh. say my mantra. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think, I think the idea that it's not, it's a, it's a practice and actually the smaller you make it, the easier it is to incorporate. If, if, if it's going to be, okay, I'm going to go get a massage and I'm going to get a mani-pedi and then I'm going to go out and, you know, sit under a tree and, you know, then, then you've got to find that five hours to do that. Right. But if you can, if it's something that you can do in 10, 15, five minutes, you know, 20 seconds or whatever, I think that that's going to probably be much more easily incorporated into um, a schedule or into a day and actually might continue. Mm -hmm. It might be more sustainable. Um, can I just mention one thing, one after kind of side effect of this work that I've been doing to try to figure out what I need is I, an insight that I've gotten, um, about that has nothing to do with self, or maybe on a, on kind of peripherally, maybe it's self care, self care adjacent (laughs) is, um, I have realized that, um, I have a number of relationships where I give, 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 and people take, 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 take. And so one of the things, one of the insights that I've gotten from, you know, just thinking about being more aware of what I need is that I have begun to realize that I need a lot more, um, like a more, more re- reciprocal relationships in my life. And, um, and so that's something that I've been kind of mm, 
kind of been rolling around in my head and I don't know I don't know what that looks like but that's an insight that just really um came to me in the past say week or so and um like I said I don't know what to do with it but th- I think that that was huge for me because that I wouldn't have admitted something like that to myself um, five years ago that's a really powerful mm-hmm. realization mm-hmm. that's a lot mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. really po- yeah yes. <laughs> like I said I don't know what to do with it but <laughs> but that idea of you know of the give and take mm-hmm. and I I think so, so part of it I think is I, I maybe I didn't feel like I deserved it or I didn't do enough to to earn it or whatever um, but now I know, no, I, this is, this is, this is something that I should have. And so I don't know how I'm going to get it, but you know, that's something that, um, that came from the work that I've done thus far. So the poem that we're going to read today is, uh, by a poet named Rupi Kaur. And the po the title is, I am complete simply because I am imperfect. Hmm. Ruby Cower is a Canadian poet. She's also an illustrator and a photographer and an author. She was born in Punjab, India, uh, but she immigrated to Canada as a as a young person, and um, and she became a uh, what we what some people call an insta poet. <laughs> I love that. Which is uh, which which I, I'm an elder millennial, so I barely have this, but it's uh, it means that she became like. Famous on Instagram. On Instagram. Mm-hmm. An Insta poet. Okay. As opposed to an Insta pot. No, no, never mind. Okay. An Insta. Yeah, Insta, well, Insta yeah. pot. Well, then she could make yummy food really quickly. Yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We think we are lost while our, our fuller, found, and complete selves are somewhere in the future. We get on our hands and knees thinking self improvement will help us reach them. But this finding ourselves bullshit is never going to end. I'm tired of putting off living until I have more information on who I am. I'm a new person every month, always becoming and unbecoming, only to become again. Our fuller selves are not off in the future. They're right here in the only moment that exists. I don't need fixing. I will not be searching for answers my whole life, not because I'm a half-formed thing, but because I'm brilliant enough to keep growing. Everything necessary to live a vivid life already exists in me. Thank you for journeying with us on this exploration of self-care, and may you find everything that you need already existing in yourself. We hope you have enjoyed the magic that has unfolded here at Witchy Wit. It would be great if you would help make Witchy Wit possible and get access to exclusive content by donating on Patreon. We'd love it if you join our Witchy community and enjoy shareable content on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Would you do us a big favor and support us by rating and reviewing us wherever you get your podcasts? It's free and helps Witchy folks find us. Feel free to email us at witchywitpodcast at gmail.com. We love to hear from our community. Reach out and let us know what's brewing in your cauldron. New episodes are released every second and fourth Friday. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform so our episodes go right to your playlist. You can listen as you ride your broom. Stay Stay witchy, witchy, y'all!